Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tian Kai, and today I'm going to present my current work, which is Fairbank with a visual analytics framework for exploring algorithmic fairness in graph mining models. So algorithmic fairness has become increasingly important in data mining and machine learning. Since those technologies are deployed to the real world applications, the impact of bias from models is becoming significant in fields such as law enforcement practice and human resources. The picture shows serious consequences for models that are biased on ethnicity and gender that models tend to evaluate criminal risk based on skin colors. And uh, the Amazon's AI2 um, is discriminating against the woman during hiring, hiring process. Interestingly, there are also studies shows, showing that even the fair algorithms that are against the discrimination, um, their effectiveness, effectiveness rely heavily on the job content. So this is a really warning for all model developers to consider algorithmic fairness during the development. Same problems that can happen on graph mining models. It is also possible to have fairness issues in mining with in terms of graph data as well as graph mining models because of the complicated connections between graph models and graph mining models with low interpretability. Uh, fairness isn't a new topic um, and there are many approaches to achieve certain degree of fairness, but why is it still a problem today? It is because it is difficult to define fairness. One of the reasons is that sensitive attributes vary from task to task and uh, the conclusion of uh, deciding whether there exists bias can be totally different based on the sensitive attributes we choose. For example, if we only classify a group of population by gender or ethnicity, we will find proportion, proportions are equally distributed, which seems fair. Um, however, if we combine attributes with gender and ethnicity, ethnicity as sensitive attributes, we can see that our groups are unbalanced. Thus, it is critical to, start to decide which attributes as sensitive attributes in the task and uh, they should be carefully picked as it can lead to controversial conclusion. The second problem is that it's hard to balance conflict and fairness rules. In a reality, there are many rules to achieve the different fairness. But the question is, on Earth, which one do we want to focus on more on how do we deal with the conflict and fairness rules? Picture shows the difference of uh, equality and equity, which corresponds to um, the individual fairness and the group fairness. Individual fairness focused on whether similar individuals are treated constantly, and the group fairness focused on whether or not the groups of population have the same probability to be assigned as positive outcome. We can see these are essentially conflicting because if one of them is guaranteed, the other will not. Thus, the motivation of the study is to explore and understand the fairness situation of uh, graph mining models under different definitions of sensitive attributes, as well as the trade-offs between different fairness settings. Apparently, human-in-the-loop approach can be a potential solution to address the problem. Um, the goal of our visual analytics system is to facilitate analysts to perform a fairness assessment of graph mining models by human-in-the-loop approach, and it's in this study, we focused on graph ranking task as our major task. Our framework consists of two stages. A, the identification of a graph nodes and group stage, and B, the diagnosis of biases in ranking results stage. In stage A, the analyst can select uh, the base model and the target model to be inspected, where the target model is usually the model with fairness rules applied and uh, the base model is selected as a reference to facilitate the result comparison. Uh, the ranking results will be generated after model selection and uh, the analyst can then define a collection of nodes, could be a top key nodes or nodes who have similar ranking scores um, and then define the groups based on selected attributes. The selected attribute uh, nodes and with ranking results are then formed for bias diagnosis. In stage B, the analyst can then explore and inspect both individual level and group level bias. The framework also supports uh, modifying the definition of fairness at any time during analysis process. 
I will explain this stage in detail in the next few slides. Speaking of identifying target nodes and groups, as we mentioned, we want our analysts to have their mindset of uh, data to be analyst and how to define a group of population by using what attributes. Thus, we provide flexibility to analysts by designing data setting panel for basic configurations and uh, mining results summarization. As we focus on uh, ranking task in this work, the histogram shows the ranking score density distribution, which supports interactions such as brush selections and uh, ranking range inputs. This is done in order to help analysts to select a set of targeted nodes that they care about. For defining groups, we design attribute view and attribute setting view to allow analysts to select a potential sensitive attributes to form groups. They can inspect the distribution of each attribute through the combined parallel set and the histogram of uh, attribute view and understand the distribution similarity between selected nodes and the whole population. The panel also supports customizing distributions of letter metric and transforming an attribute from continuous values to categorical values to help better understand the existing attributes. The color represents from the groups and the mapping is universal through our system. After defining target nodes and attributes, we can then diagnose the ranking biases from different aspects. In this stage, we diagnose both data and modal biases, where modal biases are inspected in terms of content biases, individual biases, and group biases, respectively. We first diagnose the data biases. Data biases is the bias that is original from the data itself, not relevant to any models. For this type of bias, we introduce the concept of base model and the target model. The reason for having a base model is that it is critical to understand how groups are distributed prior to applying a de-bias ranking model. And exploring the base model can also help review underlying topological features of the data. For example, if you want to analyze the ranking results of a device page rank model has um, cascading bias, we have to know that what data look like on vanilla version of page rank. If there's a original bias in data itself, we have to understand this isn't target model's behavior. And next, we'll look for a solution for visualizing content bias as well as individual bias. The content bias means that there is a situation when nodes with similar ranking scores are placed at different places. Take this figure, for example, the 10th node is placed far behind the fifth node. However, uh, they have essentially the same ranking scores. Um, in this case, people tend to believe that the fifth one is more important and relevant than the 10th one. To address the problem, we designed a means based classroom method to place nodes with same ranking score <clears throat> in the same place. For, in, for individual bias, we simply connect each node from a base model and the target model to show how each node is treated before and after applying the device ranking model. So we have designed a rank mapping view to visualize um, those biases. As we can see that the ranking results of base model and the target model are listed separately. Uh, small squares represent nodes and uh, are colored with respect to uh, analyst defined groups. Um, These squares are organized into large rectangles and each rectangle represents a cluster that contains the nodes with similar ranking scores. Uh, from top to bottom, the nodes are ranked from high to low. And in a cluster, the nodes, nodes ranks from high to low are, rank, are mapped from left to right. Each cluster from a base model is connected to a corresponding cluster in the cl uh, target model by a grid line when they share the same nodes. And same nodes in base model and the target model can be highlighted when either one of them is hovered. And next, we diagnose group bias. Group bias is the bias when model treat one or more groups with advantages. Since unbalanced group can be a bias factor, we design group proportion view to inspect the proportion changes between re re results in both models. We use bars to represent user-defined groups and the lens represents proportion among selected nodes. 
the view supports switching between proportion mode and comparison mode based on needs. Based, uh, besides a group proportion, we also um, want to know how groups ranking shifts after applying the device model. The group shift view is designed where bar charts on left shows um, where bar charts on the left shows the average ranking changes of each group. The bar charts on the right shows the distribution of group members in both models, uh, where x-axis maps the ranking position of selected nodes. So with all of that, we introduced a case study to demonstrate our work. We perform thoroughness analysis of um, uh, device ranking model in form with the subsample data of Sena uh, social um, web social network. Uh, since the inform model is based on page rank, we choose vanilla page rank as the base model and, and itself as the target model. The goal is to see if there exists a group biases after applying individual fairness a weird model. So here's the demo. First of all, we select top 50 ranked nodes as they cover most of the nodes that being uh, that belong to different ranking ranges and they are more important than the others. Next, we select and try potential sensitive attributes. We find that groups classified by gender and followers follow the, uh, has the, it shows the interesting results since the attribute view indicates that females and males have the same proportion among the uh, top 50 nodes. While males have a larger proportion than males, um, than males across the entire data set. The nodes who have more than 10 million followers make up the largest component among top 50 nodes. And we're wondering how groups impact look like when models try to reduce individual bias. From the group shift view, we find that the average ranking of group 02 with attributes of male and followers under 10K is increased by two positions. Um, which indicates that inform model indirectly shows the prefer preferences on this group, although they, the proportion of this group remains the same after applying the inform model. Finally, we explore a potential content bias and individual bias. We find that nodes that are clustered into six clusters under user-defined similarity threshold. And each cluster has relatively more nodes than those of the, of the base model. This indicates that the inform change tends to um, manipulate nodes to have a similar ranking scores in order to reduce the individual bias. However, it also may result to have a larger content bias. For example, the fourth cluster ranked from seven to 11, but uh, the difference from, uh, of their ranking scores are less than uh, user-defined similarity threshold, which are supposed to receive similar um, exposure rates. The conclusion of this work is that we propose the interactive visual analytics framework for exploring and diagnosing algorithmic fairness in graph mining models. The limitation lies on uh, scalability of uh, computation and the visual elements as well as color encoding. We hope to support more types of graph mining models in future work. So that's it. Thank you for your listen, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions.